Hey, it's Ravindra from Focuses. In this video, we'll be learning about cyclic redundancy check, also known as CRC. First of all, we'll see introduction and then we'll see solved example to be more clear. So let's get started. When some data is sent from one computer to another over a network, we expect reliability and accuracy. So network must be able to transfer data with accuracy. Let's say you're sending the message to your friend saying congratulations on becoming a doctor. And your friend receives a message which reads congratulations on becoming a dog. Well, nobody wants this mess. But the thing is, many factors can alter or wipe out one or more bits of the message. So we clearly don't want this kind of error to happen. So we need to control this error. To control and correct this kind of error, we need to first detect the error. There are different error detection techniques and CRC or cyclic redundancy check is also one of them. CRC is very powerful and widely used error detection techniques and it is based on binary division. So the basic concept here is binary division is performed at the sender's end also known as CRC generator. So in here we perform the binary division and get the remainder. Now the remainder is attached to the original message as redundancy bit and it is sent to the receiver's end also known as CRC checker. So now here we perform the very same binary division we performed here at sender's end. And again we get the remainder. This time the remainder will be all zeros. This all zeros basically signifies that there was no any error during the transmission of data. So it might be quite confusing for you guys. So let's take an example and solve it. So here I have taken the example MX and GX. So MX value is this where GX value is this. As I said earlier we perform binary division here. So GX here is our divisor and MX here is our dividend. So this is also the original message that we are going to send over our network. One thing you need to know is if you have the polynomial value, then you need to convert it into the binary or bit format. And if you already have zeros and ones, then just leave it. So here we have both value in the polynomial form. So we need to convert it into the binary or bit format. That is just zeros and ones. So to do that, it's very simple. We just need to take the coefficient of the polynomial value. So let's do it for MX. So the coefficient of X power 7 must be 1. So we have 1 multiply X power 7. Now here we don't have X power 6 and X power 5. So we directly have X power 4. That basically means that X power 6 and X power 5 must have the coefficient 0. So here we have 0 multiply X power 6 and 0 multiply X power 5. So here we have x power 4 that basically means its coefficient must be 1. Here it has x power 3 that basically means its coefficient must be 1. And x power 2 is also here so the coefficient is 1. And here we don't have x power 1 so the coefficient must be 0. And lastly we have 1 here so that basically is 1 multiply x power 0. Because anything power 0 is 1. So x power 0 is also 1. 1 multiply 1 is 1 so here we have. So it is just the expanded form of MX. So if you solve this, then you'll get this. So now, as I said earlier, we need to extract the coefficient of this uh, polynomial. So the coefficient here is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1. So you get the bit format that is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now we do the same thing for GX. Here we have x power 3, so that basically is 1 multiply x power 3, we don't have x power 2, so 0 multiply x power 2, we don't have x power 1, so 0 multiply x power 1, and finally 1 multiply x power 0. And we take the coefficient, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, so 1, 0, 0, 1 is the binary format of GX. So now we have got the corresponding uh, binary or bit format of MX and GX. So now before performing the binary division, we need to add some zeros to the dividend. We need to add some zeros here. So how to know how many number of zeros that we need to add here? So that is basically given by the divisor. We need to see the highest power of the divisor. Divisor here is GX and its highest power is 3. So we need to add 3 number of zeros here. So here we have our MX and we need to add 3 zeros at last. So let's say you didn't have polynomial here, but only these zeros and ones. In this case, what we need to do is we just need to count the total number of bits and subtract it by 1. So total number of bits of divisor here is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. So we need to add 3 number of zeros here at the dividend. So let's take another example inside an example to be more clear. So let's say this is our dividend and this is our divisor. Here total number of zero that you need to add here to the dividend is equals to total number of bits of divisor minus 1. 
total number of bits of the divisor is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So we need to add 4 zeros at the last. So I'm sure this will clear your doubts. So let's perform the main thing, which is our binary division. So yeah, first of all, let's perform the binary division at sender's end, which is also known as CRC generator. So again, this is our divisor and this is our dividend. So first thing first, we need to get this down here. Now the thing here is we need to perform XOR operation here. So if you guys aren't familiar with XOR operation, what it basically tells is if you have basically the same input, the output will be zero. And if you have the different input, then the output will be one, just like this. So now performing the XOR operation, what we basically get here is one and one is same. So we get zero here. Again, zero and zero is also same. Zero and zero here is also same. And one and one here is also same. So all four bits here will be zeros. So now we need to search for the leading one here. So in here, we don't have one. So what we basically need to do is, so get the four bits down from up here because our divisor is of four bits. So we need four bit to perform the division. So I'm just getting this four bits down, which is one, one, zero, one. So now let's perform the division again. 1 and 1 is same here, so it is 0 here. So 1 and 0 is here, which is different. So we get 1 here. 0 and 0 is same. 1 and 1 is same. So 0 and 0 is present here. Now we search for the leading 1 here. So here we found leading 1. What we basically need to do is count the number of bits from here. We have 1, 2, 3 bits only. So we have 4 bits at the divisor. So we need to get 4 bits. So we need to extract one bit from the up here so i extracted zero down here so now we perform the same division but from leading one not from zero okay it is just the shortcut method you can do one by one division too but trust me it will be too much lengthy so yeah so now getting this down in here uh, we perform the same operation so it is so one and one is same 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 different so here will be one other will be all zero now finally we see leading one here so if we count the total number of bits right from the leading one it is only one bit so that means we need to extract other three bits from the top but the thing is here we have remaining only two bits so let's get these two down in here so it is zero and zero but the thing is here we have from leading one if we count one two three only three bits is present here but our divisor is of four bits that means no further division is performed and this is basically our remainder so our final message will basically be dividend so this is our dividend plus the redundancy bit as the remainder so we basically need to replace these zeros with the redundancy bit or basically the remainder but the thing here is we only have three bits of zero here but down here we have one two three four five six bit so we only need to take three bits from here so we start from right we take one two three we take only one zero zero i hope this makes sense to you it basically means here is three bits of zero here so we only take three bit not this and we start that from the right so yeah in place of zero at zero and zero we basically have now one zero zero just like this so now we need to perform the very same division at the receiver's end so here is our divisor and this is our dividend here is one zero zero not zero 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 because uh this is the final message that we sent over the network okay so this is our new divisor now at the receiver's end now we perform the very same division so let's get this down and again perform the XOR operation again it's very same it will be all zeros so we search for the leading one there is none so we need to get four bits down in here so here is the four bits so again we get the divisor down and perform the very same operation so it is same so zero different so one same so zero same so zero so we have zero one zero zero so now the leading one is this and if we count the bit from here one two three but we have four bits in here so we basically extract one in here and get one two three four bits now we do again same division if we see that it is all same so that basically means it is all zero now so we don't have any leading one in here so we need to get from the top but the thing is here we only have two bits and those are also zeros so i basically extracted them down so we don't have anything up top here that basically means this is our remainder so if you guys remembered then i said at receiver's end we need to have remainder all zeros which is true in this case that basically identifies that no any error has occurred during the transmission so in here if you get any one 
what you basically need to know is there was some error occurred during the transmission of your data so if you guys don't believe me just change any bits in here and perform the very same binary division here you will not get all zeros that's how crc identifies or detects if there is any error during the transmission of data so this is pretty much it for crc or cyclic redundancy check i think this video helped you guys so stay tuned for more exciting videos and thank you guys for watching